Hi, and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us to this quick stream. Myself from Apps Events, and I'm kindly joined by Sam Uff from WAND. Sam is the technical manager and running all of the sync tools for WAND, which we'll talk about in a moment. So we've had in the last few weeks, in fact, for the last few months, we've had a lot of schools asking us about how they can get their data from their SIS or MIS synced to Google and automatically provisioning those accounts. WUND does an awesome job of this, actually based out of the UK, working a lot with English schools, but now also supporting a lot of the um, SIS that international schools are using as well. Sam, welcome. How are you doing today, Sam? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? All good? Yeah, very good, thanks. I know it's just past the bank holiday weekend in the UK, so I'm sure many schools have been on holiday for the, last, for the three days for the long weekend. Yeah, just as a quick... <laughs> They're Just a little bit busy this morning, yeah, getting back to it. Yeah, this is your first call of the day, I know, Sam. So yeah. just a quick intro. So Google Sync by WUND supports a lot of SAS, and this is just a quick sample of the SAS that are being supported. Um, I've highlighted three there that I know international schools are using quite a lot. We've got ISAMS, SIMS, and Veracross. In addition to that, Sam, you, you support a number of Australian SAS as well. Could you give an example of a couple of the Australian ones you support? Uh, yeah, we have um, Synergetic um, and uh, KMAR, I believe, is a, a one that's actually in uh, New Zealand as well. So, and uh, there's a, there's a number of others. Um, probably most of the most widely used ones um, across that region. Brilliant. And I think, do you have some more syncs upcoming in the future? Uh, yeah, definitely. We're always bringing on uh, new new providers of, of, of SIS and, and as they're called MIS in in the uh, the UK. Um, any schools that are supported by by something more niche, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly look into um, supporting them all going forward. Brilliant. So we've had a lot of schools been asking about this. Obviously, with Google Education Plus uh, proving to be very popular now, people want to integrate all their systems to make it a lot easier. So Sam, thank you very much for joining me. And I know you're gonna, do you wanna give a quick overview of what you're gonna walk through today? Yeah, so we're just gonna go through the settings for our Google Sync tool, which is backed up by our, our integrations to, to, uh, to the Sys um, systems that, that we work with. Um, in going through these settings, you'll get a, a general overview of what uh, Google Sync, uh, one Google Sync is capable of and and hopefully what it can do for, for your school or schools that you, you work with. Brilliant. Okay, Sam, so I'm, I'm going to bring your screen in now so you can walk us through that. Yep. Okay, so um, the first thing we do um, when we're, we're setting up Google Sync um, is we connect the Google Sync tenant or uh, Google Workspace tenancy with, with ourselves via Google APIs. And then that allows us to, to go through these settings and decide what we're going to do for your school in terms of provisioning um, Google Workspace from, from the school's uh, SIS. So the first thing we do is to, to pick the domain where we can find all of the students, um, pick the organizational unit where we'll be able to see all of the students from. So for us, it's this Google, um, this Google test OU. Um, with students in, and then we can see any of the users in these, these sub OUs as well. Um, this stops us from duplicating across schools where there are schools in, in, in or more than one school in a singular tenancy. Um, we're then able to organize an OU structures. For, so for example, we could do a year and then registration group. Um, we'll provision that OU structure and we'll drop any new users or even existing users um, in Google Workspace that we've we've matched up um, with your SIS data into the bottom level of, of that um, OU structure. And then for staff, um, again, you pick the, pick the domain where we'll find the staff um, and the staff organizational unit. We then have rules, so we can decide to omit staff if we want to, or even to omit students. So if you have hybrid setups, for example, if, if the school's using something else um, for staff, as far as the cloud infrastructure goes, um, perhaps as you're in Office 365, then you might want to omit staff so they don't appear in the um, in the directory, and we won't do anything Google related with with those um, users from the SIS. Um, as far as students go, we can add in custom rules. So if we wanted to 
uh, only see year one and year two. This is what we would do. And then it would omit everybody else from being seen in the directory. If we remove all of the rules, then it just includes all of the students. Creating and managing accounts. Um, so you can either manually create accounts or you can have us do it automatically for you. Um, we have a number of default naming conventions that will be useful to you. All of these have a number two on the end. Uh, these are just placeholder examples of what happens when a user is duplicated. Um, however, if our defaults don't meet your needs, you can create your own custom ones by dragging these boxes down into here. And then even, even then, if, if these boxes don't um, sort of meet your needs again, then we can create custom naming conventions for you um, in the back end. As far as staff goes, um, when we create accounts, you can choose to have your staff created, your staff Google accounts created um, without their their sort of first name. So you'll just see the surname um, and then their title, um, be it Mr, Mrs, or, or any other title that's visible in the SIS. Um, we have added a, a new setting recently, which allows you to set the same password for all users. Um, Often in the primary phase of education, we've been asked to do this, um, and we've been we've been reluctant to do it in the past. But um, we're, we're, we've been assured now that there's there's no sort of um, angles to data protection that that we would need to avoid. So we've we've been able to add in a setting that allow you to set the same password for everybody. And then of course you can always prompt users to change their password when they when they log in, or even change them manually from the from the Google App and Console. Um, we can suspend and delete users. Um, we have two different settings for this: one for staff and one for students, because you might need to have um, you might need to have a different setting for each group of people. Um, the default for each of these is to wait two days, um, suspend the account, and then wait a subsequent fourteen days, and then delete the account. But I believe this goes all the way up to twenty years. So for most um, school settings, this will be more than abundant for you to. Um, fit in your needs. Google Groups, we can create Google Groups based on year group, house group, and registration group. Um, if you turn this setting on here, we can then create and manage the group memberships um, for those Google Groups based again on the SIS as everything in here is. Um, and then the student group membership removals, um, we can do uh, automatically and again staff group membership removals we can do automatically we split these two settings out because sometimes you'll have people like supply teachers um, or people who don't always work in the school and therefore the sys might not get updated with their um, group um, or the, their group memberships uh, and therefore our sync when it's running on automatic mode would boot them out of that group every single day so you can turn staff group membership removals to manual to avoid that and obviously with staff turnover often being lower than student turnover it doesn't create too much of a problem having to do that and create miscellaneous groups as well um, this won't be relevant to all sys um, providers but um, oftentimes you'll have these miscellaneous groups that are automatically created when the sys is set up and you can also obviously create your own miscellaneous groups um, so they obviously won't fit into the year group house group and registration group criteria but we've provided you the option to create those if you need to google classroom google classroom the criteria for provisioning those um, those classrooms will be um, whether you have classes or registration groups um, in the sys and they will automatically be created um, as google classrooms but we can on a later page that I'll show you, you can match up your classes and even if they already exist and even ignore them if you just don't want to create a classroom for them. Um, in some systems, classes may be known as teaching sets or, or something other than that, but essentially they are the groups that students are taught in for individual lessons. Um, so in secondary schools, those those groups will be quite abundant, um, but in, in, a, in a primary phase setting, um, it will just depend on the phases of or the um, the forms of entry for that primary school. So, for example, if you have 
free form entry, then there'll be 21 classes in, in a normal sort of UK educa education system school. Um, and they'll be based on, on the registration groups. So much as with above with groups, you can choose to create them automatically, choose to manage the class memberships and create them. Um, membership removals, again, have been split out between students and staff. And you can also choose to archive your classrooms at the end of the academic year. Um, you pick a day to do that, and then on the following day, it will, it will archive them. This will best be done um, when Google Classrooms stop being used within a school for the year, um, but also before the date that the academic year rolls over, um, it will need to be within the SIS system. Um, we're due to add a setting here as well, which will also uh, allow you to choose um, the academic year rollover date so that we know how to turn or, or when to turn on the automatic creation of classrooms again so that we can create classrooms and match them up to the new year MIS IDs rather than existing uh, MIS IDs from, from the current year. Um, we have uh, a single sign-on system um, that works as a standalone product but has some interoperability with Google Sync in that if you have all of your Google users matched and you have our single sign-on product, um, you can make one to the identity provider for Google, or Google Workspace, I should say, and by extension, um, Chrome devices. When you land on our single sign-on dashboard, um, you will be initially presented with all of these five um, Google tiles um, in order to, to log into to Google Workspace apps but you can use this setting here to omit which ones would, would show. So oftentimes we'll be asked to um, help people omit the Gmail tile from student dashboards, and this is where you would do it from. Now, obviously in the Google Admin Console, you can use, use the Admin Console to uh, block Gmail from, from certain groups of users, but this just removes the confusion from clicking on the tile and, and not getting anywhere essentially. Um, just a couple more things to touch on, on on one Google Sync. So on the matching page here, um, we have the ability to match up our users. Um, we'll wait for the page to load, but we won't actually go and uh, match anybody up. There we go. So all of these green ones are able to match. And the red ones here, obviously, this is test data, so it's not really um, indicative of what a real school will look like. Typically, you'll have less than 5% or far less than 5% of these users showing up as exceptions. But for example, here, Alyssa Abbas, you would want to allow her through as a match. So you would just click cancel there. And then when you save this page, she will go through as a match. If we go again back to matching, go to match groups. for this page to load because it's pulling everything all the groups in from google so if we wanted to i'm not sure that there will be a group for this one because again it's test data oh we've got multiple groups for this obviously the sync's been run quite a few times on this school um we're able to then match up 2gh here if we wanted to we could ignore 2gh we could choose to create on sync so when we run the sync it will create the create the group um, or you can create it now. So you click create now and then you save the matches and then it will create all of them. Believe due to limitations with APIs, if you choose to create now, we can only do three groups at a time on this page. Um, but during the sync, you can create any number um, up to the limit that's set by Google within the admin console. And Google Classroom looks exactly the same. The only difference is, is when you find your Google Classrooms here. So if we find the Google Classroom for 2GH, you see we've got a number of them in here because we've run the sync so many times in, in webinars such as this. Um, and they all have their, their Google Classroom ID against them because it is possible to name a classroom exactly the same as, um, as another classroom. You will need these in order to, to differentiate and isolate your Google Classrooms. Just finally to sum up, we'll hop back to the directory. So this is where you'll find all of your matched up users. Now we haven't matched any users up in our setting in our setting in our setup of this um, this school, but ultimately, had we set this up, 
all the way through. We would have matched up all of these users or we'd have created them by running the sync manually by clicking this button, which give you a calculation of the sync um, and then allow you to run the sync and that will create any users that haven't been matched up. You can also ignore users if you don't want to, to create them um, and, and everybody will end up either matched up or ignored. And then ultimately we'll suspend users automatically for people, but that's not going to happen the first time you run the sync for the most part. And then when you're happy having run the first sync, most of the time what, what people will want to do is to set the, the sync mode to automatic and that will run once per day. Um, it's important to say that we can't, at the moment we haven't provided uh, any sort of provision to um, decide what time your sync will run, but it will run once per day. And generally if it runs at, at a certain time, it will run at that time or around that time every single day. Um, I think that's just about it, James, to, to sum up um, the sort of like a, a high level overview of, of Google Sync. So I'll, I'll hand back to you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sam. I appreciate that. Just got a couple of quick questions before we, before we close out. Would you have any uh, tips for schools setting up the sync for the first time? For example, what should schools do with their SAS or their MIS before they run the sync? Yeah, certainly. I mean, Definitely go through and, and make sure that everybody has um, both a start date um, and anybody that you would want to have their accounts suspended or deleted by the system automatically will need um, a leaving date. Um, you'll also want to make sure that all of, you, all of your classes um, are in order, by which I mean they're, they're extant in, in, the, in the SIS so that we can either um, create them or match them up um, and make sure all of your data is accurate, accurate as far as date of births goes so that you can differentiate anybody who has the same names uh, and such. But um, other than that, it is a, a fairly simple thing to set up. Um, most schools will have um, their SIS data in, in, a, in pretty good working order as well already because there's, there's, there's generally a requirement to, to have done so. And that's what makes it such a powerful um, source of truth as well for us to be working with. And that, I mean, that was a quick, pretty quick demo. I mean, I think a lot of it depends on the matching of names, but generally, Sam, like, how long does it take to set up the set up the sync the first time? Sure. So it will vary between, uh, mostly between sort of phases of education, because in a in a primary setting, you're going to have to probably the 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 biggest chore to to setting this up will be uh, matching your users as far as primary phase schools go and matching up the classes, as I say, will take seconds because there's generally just tens of classrooms in a primary school. Um, it can take a couple of hours to go through setting this up in a secondary school um, or a secondary phase school or all through school, just because you will have um, many hundreds of, of classrooms generally. Um, the user matching step won't take much longer than, than a primary phase school but um, it, it's the classes and the groups that, that add on the extra time but the time saved here is is potentially in, in the hundreds of hours for, for managing Google Workspace and, and that frees up time for for the the person who would normally have done that to be to be doing something um, far more useful. Absolutely. Well, I used to be in that role, Sam, so I completely agree. I've done that before. <laughs> well, Sam, very much. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today and, and walking us through no that. Worries. If anybody's watching this and they want more details about if you want a, a demo, particularly for your school, please do reach out. You can drop me an email, drop us a message on LinkedIn, appsevents.com forward slash WUND. We have an information form there as well. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful week.